Hey devs, it's Tools and Tips Tuesday once again. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can test our Android application deep links using ADB from the command line. But before we get started with that, let's just do a really quick recap of what a deep link is. If you're already familiar with a deep link, go ahead and skip forward in the video. Now, a deep link is essentially a URL that navigates to a specific piece of content within your application or your website. And within the context of Android development, we can register our application to handle specific deep links that we own and open up into specific pages or screens into our app. So now let's start walking through an example of how we could validate that a deep link works in our application. If I switch over into Android Studio, we'll see an example here of a very simple deep link. It's simply HTTP colon backslash backslash goobar.io. And all I want this to do is open up into an app that I have installed on my emulator. Now, the way we would tell our application to handle this within Android is to define an intent filter in our manifest. So if we open up our manifest, we can see an example of what that intent filter might look like. We need to make sure that we have an action defined with the view action. And then we also need to add the default and browsable intent filter categories. And then finally, we have the data element. And this is where we really define the structure of our deep links. So first I've defined the HTTP scheme, and then I've defined goobar.io as the host. And so what this indicates to the system is that any deep link that is HTTP slash goobar.io, that that should be recognized and opened up into our application. Now we could test this type of deep link by sending ourselves a URL or via you know, email or text message, clicking on it, uh, but that becomes very cumbersome and it's much easier to test this using ADB. As a real quick recap, what is ADB? ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge and is a command line tool that is installed when you install the Android SDK. Now we're going to be using this from the command line and so you'll need to make sure that you have ADB added to your command line path in whatever operating system you're working with. And to make sure that you have that installed before going any further, you can go back into your IDE, open up your terminal, and simply type ADB to the console. And you should see output relating to the Android Debug Bridge tool. If you don't, if you see something like command not recognized, you want to pause the video and look up how to add ADB to your path, and then come back and pick up the video from here. Now it's time to actually test our deep link URL. So one more time, just to review, we'll take a look at the URL. We'll see it's http colon slash slash goobar.io. Now to test this, we can come down to the command line and I'm gonna paste in this following command. We're gonna walk through this one piece at a time. So we'll see adb shell am start dash w dash a android.intent.action.view dash d and then the interesting part here is the actual deep link URL that we want to test. And if I hit return here, you'll see that it has opened up the intent differentiator in the Android system. And it's recognized that this deep link sandbox application can handle that URL. And if I go ahead and click just once, it will open that up. And so once again, we can test this out. We can go ahead and close out any existing open applications. And if we simply rerun that deep link command, once again, it asks us if we wanna open this up with our deep link sandbox application. This time we'll go ahead and click always. You see it opens us up right to the home screen in this application, which is exactly what we would expect as our intent filter that was defined in the manifest specifies that it should open main activity when it receives that deep link URL. Now that command is pretty long and there's a lot of pieces to it. So let's break those individual components down one by one to help you understand what this is actually doing. So if we go back into Android Studio, let's look at this first part of this. We execute adb shell. So with ADB, we can actually open up an interactive shell session with our uh, emulator or device 
and actually execute these commands um, one by one or have an interactive shell and execute multiple commands. The next piece of this is AM. AM in this case stands for Activity Manager. So we can actually interact with the Activity Manager directly. And in this case, by saying ADB shell AM start, this is saying that we want to start some activity with an intent that was be specified later. And we can actually execute this without having to actually open up the shell. So we can kind of bypass that and just tell the Activity Manager, hey, open up some activity that handles this following intent. So the next part of this then is specifying that intent. So the, the dash W says that we should wait to finish this command until the intent handling has finished. So this is nice. This gives us a chance to actually, you know, process that intent before that executes. And then we can say dash A. This is saying this will be the action for this intent. And then we specify the view action which if you remember, we have the view action specified here in our intent filter, so that matches up. And then the dash D portion of this command is the data or the URI. So that's where we actually specify the deep link URL that we want to handle. So if we wanna then test different URLs and deep links down the line, which we will do in this video, all we really need to do is change the URL string here at the end of this command. So once you have this, you can kind of save it off and you don't have to copy it every single time. Now, one useful strategy for kind of storing these commands to test your deep links down the road is to create a readme or add to an existing readme and actually save these commands directly into that readme. So you see, if I go back into Android Studio, I've actually created a readme document and created a section called test deep links. And in this case, I've actually saved this command right there so that I can grab it for future use. And if you wanted to make it very clear what deep link you are saving, you could actually put that maybe right above the command. So now you can see what ADB command to execute from your terminal and what that corresponding URL should be that it should handle. This is really helpful once you start to add multiple deep links within a project, as we'll do later in this video. Now that we've seen a really simple example of how to test a deep link into our Android application, let's walk through a little bit more interesting example of how to actually add a new deep link to our app and test it via ADB. So if we open up our IDE once again, we want to add a new deep link here that takes us to some type of specific tag. So maybe this is an application that is storing blog related data. So in this case, the new deep link is going to be http colon slash slash goobar.io slash tag slash some specific tag. So now the first thing we might do here is actually go into our readme and update this to kind of document the contract that, of what it is that we want to add and be able to test. So I'll start by adding that new URL, and then we're just going to copy our existing test command and update the data portion of that command to take into account the new URI. Now we're going to go over into our Android manifest, and we're going to update our intent filter and add a new intent filter to our main activity so that it can handle this new URI. So we'll add a new data tag. And then for the scheme, once again, we'll use HTTP. And then for the host, once again, it will also be gubar.io. And now for the path prefix, we are going to use slash tag. And then we just need to close out this data element. Now, to test this, what we can do is go to main activity, and I'm going to make sure that I have breakpoint set both in on create and on new intent. Both of these can potentially receive that new intent when we have a deep link, depending on whether or not the application is already open. So now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to my emulator. Excellent. 
So now I will go ahead and attach the debugger so that when we receive this intent, we can inspect the contents of it. Now go to the readme. I will copy that test command for ADB and I will delete our previous test command. I'll paste that new one in and hit enter. And you see it has once again asked how I want to handle this. So we'll go ahead and click Deep Link Sandbox and hit Always. And we'll see here our breakpoint within on new intent has been hit because the application was already open. Now, if we want to verify the contents of that intent, we can expand our intent uh, item here in the debug window. And we can look specifically at the data tag here and see that the URI string is in fact goobar.io slash tag slash tag one, two, three. So you see, this shows us that we've been able to successfully trigger the handling of that specific intent. And we've also been able to verify that our activity is receiving it correctly. And from here, we could process that intent however we needed to. So as you can see, Testing deep links defined within our manifest can be quite simple once you kind of have that ADB testing command saved off. Now, another area where testing using this approach is really helpful is when testing deep links that are defined and managed within a navigation graph of our application. So if we look here at this little sample application that we've been testing, we'll see that we have a bottom navigation structure set up within that app. We have a home fragment, a posts fragment, and a categories fragment. Now, basically each of those destinations has been set up to take a different deep link. And if we look here, we can look at the navigation posts fragment in this navigation graph. And we'll see here that it takes two different types of deep links. It takes a deep link that is just goobar.io slash posts. And then it takes another type of deep link that is goobar.io slash posts slash and then some dynamic post ID. And the same structure has been implemented for the categories fragment as well. It takes slash categories and slash categories slash category ID. So we could test this using the same approach that we've seen using ADB. So to test a deep link and open up a specific location within our navigation graph, we can copy one of these URLs that we have added to our readme. These correspond to each of those four deep links that we have added to our navigation graph. So in this case, let's say I grab this one to go to a specific post. In this case, I can come down here, paste the command into the command line, hit enter, and we'll see that the application has opened up specifically to the posts page. And that intent data would include that specific post ID. And very similarly, if I come here and I grab the categories test command and I execute that command, It'll once again ask me how I want to handle that. And if I want to test the categories command, I could do that by grabbing that command, opening up my terminal, pasting it in, hitting enter. And we'll see in this case, my emulator has now opened directly to the categories tab. So, as you're building up navigation graphs when using the navigation architecture component, a good practice could be to build up this readme of all the specific destinations handled by deep links in your graph, along with associated ADB test commands so that you can quickly test that those locations are opening properly when handling deep links. So, as a quick review, Using the Android Debug Bridge tool, or ADB for short, we can easily send intent data to the Activity Manager to validate the handling of deep links within our application. We can use this both to validate deep links that we expect our apps to manage and to make sure that we don't handle deep links that we do not want to handle. 
This works for deep links defined in our manifest explicitly using attempt filters. And this works for deep links that are managed using the navigation component. Both of these approaches can be made easier by saving these test commands in some type of a readme document along with examples of the URLs that they are meant to handle. This makes it really easy to go back later after you've already implemented this stuff and maybe don't remember these commands and just quickly grab that command and execute it to make sure that things are still working as expected. This, this workflow has really helped me lately when testing some new deep link code in our app and hopefully it'll help you in your projects as well. As always, thank you so much for watching devs. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on future tools and tips, and I will catch you all in the next video.